welcome to the Cinema Gold Show. I'm your host, Larry Lease, and on today's episode, we be getting our series, Dead on Arrival, a first-timer's watch of The Walking Dead. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this episode. If you're a fan of audiobooks from any kind of genre, then you need to check out Audible. Visit audibletrial.com slash larry21 for a free audiobook of your choice and a free three-month trial. And without further ado, let's dive right into today's episode. Among a certain sect of people, there was no TV series with more anticipation around it than The Walking Dead. The comic books telling a very straightforward and stirring story of people living in America overrun by zombies provide some incredibly compelling source material. On top of that, just the idea of a network like AMC Tackling the project were enough to get a fanboy's pulse racing. So did the show itself deliver? For season one, I'd say yes. Though, there certainly is room for improvement going forward. Season one is of course a very short one, comprising of just six episodes. During that time, The Walking Dead quickly proved it was a show with genuine, dramatic weight and tension, starting with the pilot episode, Days Gone By. Some of my favorite scenes of the season are contained here, especially the somber juxtaposition between lead character Rick Grimes returning to put a zombie he counted earlier out of her misery with Morgan, trying and failing to do the same thing for his wife, knowing it's all, it's not truly her anymore, but ain't unable to go through with the act of shooting her. All involved in The Walking Dead made it clear going in that the TV series would sometimes deviate from the comic. That all from aforementioned sequence with Morgan and his wife, which is not in the comic, quickly proved how this was not a bad thing in and of itself, presenting something new to comic book fans that felt utterly in touch with the story. However, the second episode introduced other new elements that were far shakier. Several new characters were a part of the survivor's camp that Rick's wife Lori, his son Carl, and his friend Shane had joined, but they were a very mixed bag, with more working against them and four. The biggest problem was Merle Dixon, a coked up, loudmouth, flagrant racist with violent tendencies, who just happened to be making a power play when Rick met him. Merle was so vile, it was impossible to believe the others in the camp would have ever took him in, and his presence in the second episode really threw off the balance of the realistic vibe the show has so successfully set up in the pilot. Among the other new characters, Merle's brother Daryl worked much better. He was a loudmouth jerk, sure but toned down enough and presented with enough nuances to believe he could be tolerated, unlike Merle and Redis gave the guy a bit of charm underneath it all. However, the rest of the new characters were pretty weak, including the ridiculously named T-Dog and a Latino family and an African-American woman who were on screen plenty, but never really fleshed out his characters, which made would-be emotional moments involving both fall flat. In a way, though, the show's own weakness helped it during the standout fourth episode, Vetos, because the new characters had either been non-entities or very big extreme types. It felt like more of the same when we met a group of gangbangers who caused trouble for our heroes in Atlanta. But just as I was rolling my eyes at yet another cliche type being introduced, the story took a nice turn. As we learned, these guys were pretty much putting on an act to help protect a group of invalid nursing home residents inside. Besides the pilot, Beethoven was the best episode of the season, telling an engaging story that was capped off by a shocking finale as zombies invaded the camp, killing many, including poor Amy, in the process. It also was a reminder of the genuine pathos that could be gotten from this zombie story as we saw the grief on the face of Andrea holding her sister as she died. Walking Dead never quite matched those heights again with a decent but perhaps too emotional penultimate episode. It slowed down at a point where the season could use more momentum. With only six episodes, it was hard not to feel like every moment counted, more than usual, and seeing the family whose name I don't know part ways with everyone was an example of a scene that didn't really register in the way it felt intended to. The finale, an ex excursion into the CDC, offered some interesting material and character interactions. Tangents like this feel appropriate and fitting in with the world both the comic book and the show have created. And certainly, Andrea's initial decision to stay and die in the resulting give-up-or-not conflict it brought her 
In Dale, felt like something that would happen in this zombie apocalypse scenario, where holding on to hope is an extremely difficult thing. With only six episodes, the flaws stick out more than they would in a cable normal 13 episode season. But while I was disappointed in a lot of the decisions made with the new characters, a lot of the show also worked very well. It captured the despair and fear of these people's lives, peppered by the rare moments of joy that can be caused by the smallest of things. That being said, I do hope the show can become more consistent in Season 2. It's hard not to think of Season 1 as a mere sampler of the series, presenting a few different storylines and situations for the characters to encounter. But with the knowledge that Season 2, these are the type of storylines that might have more room to breathe. For now, I'm still very thankful for this show's existence. To have a horror-centric comic book adapted in such a high-profile way for television is an impressive feat. However, it will let Hollywood know there's a lot of wonderful material to be mined from non-superhero comic books which, which can have genuine weight and power. So now I ask you, what do you think of Season 1 of The Walking Dead? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, give us a thumbs up if you like our video, subscribe to the channel for even more content, hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos, and as always, consider supporting the channel. You can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the cinema gold. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.